How much did Walter Mitty spend on his trips? I'm going to answer this in two different ways. To start, I'm just going to calculate everything we see on screen with some logical assumptions that fill in the gaps. You'll see more what I mean when I get into the video. I also want to make it clear, this is just for the trips themselves. So him taking like a taxi ride in New York, I'm not going to count. Then I thought it'd be interesting to see how much it would cost to actually replicate this if you were to try it on your own like today. But first I wanted to rewatch the movie to both refresh my memory of the plot points and take notes of every purchase he makes. Surprisingly, it took two separate days for this to be completed despite it only being a two hour long movie. This is because on the first day, mid viewing, my girlfriend got a notification that said her visa finally got approved to go to Canada, but <laughs> this is a topic for another day. And then two days later, we jumped back in and finished what we started. My camera did die <laughs> at one point, but don't worry, I had a charger on hand to get the rest of this pointless footage in the grand scheme. <laughs> okay, so what did I find in my research? And if it wasn't obvious enough before, spoilers ahead. If you care about spoilers, go watch it, despite it being like an 11 year old movie. Go watch it and then come back to this video. It's a not great movie, but like it's good. You know, it's a comfort movie. You'll see what I mean. <laughs> Walter Mitty's first adventure starts with a very powerful montage of him building up the courage to go and fly to Greenland. In this, we can also surmise that he did all of this on the same day. Also, since he's based in New York, he most likely flew out of JFK, considering it's the biggest airport. And this will be my assumption for the rest of the video when it comes to leaving and coming back. His destination in Greenland is called Nuke International Airport. This was on Air Greenland, by the way, and it looked like he just had normal economy seats, no first class or anything. Funny enough, there was only one other person on the plane and he sat right next to him, which is very typical, uh, I think, of flying, you know? Okay, so we get our first on-screen purchase for the video. And luckily, towards the end of this Greenland trip, we actually get to see how much he spent on the flight there. I also want to throw in the fact that he spent $17.25 on passport photos and $400 on passport Rush Clark. If anyone knows <laughs> what exactly this is referring to, I'm probably misreading it or something. I assume it has something to do with like expediting your passport to make the whole process go faster, but that, that's just a guess. So if anybody has any ideas, please comment down below. Nonetheless, since these are expenses he would only do because of this trip, I feel like it still applies to the grand total. But getting back to the main expense seen in his checkbook, it says he spent a whopping $2,872.40. Very meticulous about <laughs> his prices on the plane to Greenland. Though I think he was scammed to an extent because my research shows at most, at the very most, $2,500 for round trip from New York to New. I think he did technically leave in May and right now it's March, but airline prices must have been absolutely insane 11 years ago to warrant such a high price tag even though i know he was doing it same day i just i don't <laughs> i don't see any logic with it costing that much anyways I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself also let's throw in like a total tracker amount like down to the bottom or something wait what's this incorrect norsac air greenland's only airbus will not fly to nuke an Airbus could never land a Nuke International Airport because at just 1.1 miles in length, the runway is too short. If this movie was accurate, Walter Mitty would be flying in a small propeller plane to Nuke, like these Dash 8s that Air Greenland uses for seasonal international flights between Nuke and Ray Kavik and for year-round domestic flights around the country. True fact, there is only one town in Greenland where an Airbus can land. That town is the aforementioned Kangerlusa, whoa, <laughs> Kangerlusa, located on the Arctic Circle on Greenland's west coast. Air Greenland uses it, its single Airbus for year-round international flights between that place and Copenhagen. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> well, I guess we just keep moving forward and just, it's just. Maybe that's why it costs so much. He had, to, he had to build a whole nother runway. He then rents a red car over the blue car, since there's only two options. And in this checkbook, it also says this costs $61. And that is the last piece of information we know moving forward in terms of looking at the checkbook for reference. Wait a minute, go go back. Red car versus blue car. Is this, is this a Matrix reference? Since Walter is choosing to live a life to the fullest extent instead of living his mundane day-to-day -day, nine to five. Or maybe it's a reference to red versus blue. Oh, wait, I'm actually not special for thinking this and people already thought of this years ago. Oh, okay. Remember kids, you're not special. <laughs> never, never try to be special. <laughs> well, I thought of it on my own anyways. Okay, I wanna make that clear. I, when I was writing this, when I was doing research, I thought, whoa, that's a, that's a Matrix reference. And then I discovered the Reddit post. He rents his car and goes to a local bar. Here it looks he buys one small beer shoe. Now it's not clear if he paid for it, but assuming 
Walter isn't a criminal, I think it's safe to say he did pay for it. What I was able to find in my research for the price of one beer in a neighborhood pub, which is going to equate about 500 milliliters to one pint, in New Greenland is about 75 Danish krone. Also keep in mind these prices are for 2024 and not for whatever year this movie was set in. I originally thought that the movie was just set in 2013 to correspond with the same year the movie came out, but then I realized the situation was a lot more nuanced for what you could consider as the setting. For example, you could say that it was set in 2010 for the eruption of the... Ijafajalopul. <laughs> <laughs> happened <laughs> you know when he's running away from the volcano that eruption <laughs> or it could just be in 2000 when life magazine ceases print publication a move that aligned with its parent company time rearranging its assets and publication whatever it is i couldn't really give accurate prices anyways so let's just assume <laughs> for sandy's sake that it doesn't stray that far away from modern prices i know there's there's a lot of variables to inflation and everything in countries but let's just assume okay <laughs> so what i was able to find the traditional standard beer boot is two liters but you can find them in various sizes including half liter beer boots and one liter beer boot so since he asked for a small beer boot let's just say for the sake of easiness that he got the half liter beer boot which translates to about 11 dollars usd he also ate some of the food there but I think that's free. It's just like bar snack things. I don't really go to bars, but I think it's free. Okay, now looking at the total, he has spent a whopping $3,361.25. Not bad for one day, but Walter, don't worry. This next section I like to call free ride. Walter would proceed to get a free helicopter ride to a boat where he had some fun time with some sharks. Then that free boat ride would take him all the way to Iceland. Or at least I'm assuming it's free. Considering he just fought off some sharks, I don't think anyone's gonna make him pay after that. He did break the radio, but I think that's more of the drunk helicopter pilot's fault, <laughs> if anything. And at that point, we conclude day one. When he finally lands in Iceland, he has to race all the other seamen to get a free bike. From there, he would crash like a big dum-dum and then proceed to just run. Now that is taking public transportation to a whole nother level. <laughs> really saving that extra dollar. He eventually finds this group of kids where he speaks very fluent Icelandic. Here he's able to trade his stretch Armstrong toy for a longboard and this results in probably the most popular clip from this movie as he is just booking it down this hill unfortunately he makes it all the way down to this abandoned city where the volcanic eruption happens but hey at least he gets a free car ride out of it so what's the total now okay not too bad despite eating only beer snacks and his mom's cake for the past two days <laughs> but he is saving a lot of money so this kind stranger drops him off at a local papa john's here it looks like he has a slice of pepperoni and a soft drink which in iceland that would set you back about wait there isn't even a papa john's in iceland a bakery in the west iceland town of borgarness was converted into a Papa John's for the movie. What the frick, Walter Mitty? Really trying to make my job harder than it has to be. Jeez. From what I can tell, there's only La Colina Pizzeria in this town that they built the set. I mentioned it before, the one with the, one with the B. And it looks a lot more expensive than the typical Papa John slice. So let's take the liberty in saying that he spent about $9 on a small pepperoni pizza, considering they don't do it by the slice. So I'm a little confused how, like it looks like he just got an individual slice, but he must've got the smallest one and just threw out the rest and Save the little one. And then he got a soda. Let's just assume that's $2 for a soda. In total being $11 from Papa John's. And now for the life of me, I can't find a very solid accommodation in the same town that they built the Papa John's. So I'm going to make a very educated guess on this. More on the side of guess than educated, but <laughs> you know what I mean. The first option is he slept outside and didn't freeze to death. Hell, that part of the movie where he's riding the bike and then running and then the skateboard surpassed, I believe, 17 kilometers. So clearly he's just a madman. Or I'm just going to take the fact that the cheapest three-star hotel room in Iceland found on kayak in the last two weeks was $58. I choose the latter. Oh, throw it on the board. <laughs> $58. After this one night, we see our hero fly back to New York and back to his normal life. But this leaves us with a question. How much did the plane cost? We see that he landed in New York with American Airlines, so he had some kind of layover. Also, we can mark off the fact that he didn't go back to Greenland and then to New York because I don't see any American Airlines layovers that head back to New York from Greenland. A lot of JetBlue, but no American. Do you know where I do see American Airlines though? From Iceland to London, then to New York. So I think we can pretty safely conclude that he's leaving from Iceland. However, this also means that he spent $2,800 on a one-way ticket from New York to Greenland. It wasn't a <laughs> it wasn't a round trip. It was a one-way, and he had to sit by someone else. 
Maybe inflation isn't too bad after all. Okay, so let's give him the benefit of the doubt and hope that he got the lowest amount for a return ticket, which I found to be about $597. In reality, this is probably more considering he got it same day because he didn't know he was going to Iceland. So it must have been same day or at least a day before, I guess. But let's just say $597. <laughs> but that then would leave our total to be a very estimated $4,029.25. Not great for a three-day trip, but you know, got some cool footage, but don't worry. Mitty's got one more trip in him. Unfortunately, it's right after getting his heart broken by his crush and he lost his job, but that doesn't stop a man's mission to find a photographer. Okay, but I, I do have to preface in saying that this, this part goes off the rails. I mean, just completely lies off. Firstly, let's conclude that he already had all the gear. I mean, we see some of it, but let's just accept that he already has everything needed for a trek through the Himalayas. Next, he flies to Yemen, not Afghanistan. He says later in the film, after getting detained by TSA, don't worry about it, <laughs> that he got through the travel ban by traveling through Yemen into Afghanistan. And apparently the plane ticket only cost him $84 into Yemen. So not too bad, not too bad. Wait a minute, Yemen isn't even connected to Afghanistan. Like not even a little bit. <laughs> so he must have taken a flight from Yemen to Afghanistan. And I'm seeing like $260. So let's just, let's just go with that. He finally makes it to Afghanistan. Now he just has to make it to the Himalayas. Considering his mom said the upper Himalayas is where Sean is located, the most logical location he's going to be in is the Hindu Kush. And if you don't know, the Hindu Kush spans 500 miles across the Iranian plateau in Central and South Asia, positioned to the west of the Himalayas. This mountain range extends from the central and eastern parts of Afghanistan into northwestern Pakistan and far southeastern part of Tajikistan. He clearly gets there by local bus, which is said to be between $1 and $10. Considering the extreme location, let's just say $10. So he finally makes it to the base camp of the mountain range, but he is not alone. Evidently, he has rented two strong little men. It is said that guide services for Everest can be up to $10,000 per expedition. However, this isn't Everest and he has two guides. So there's a lot of guesswork here. Like this Himalayas trip through Afghanistan is not the most publicized thing. Like not a lot of people do this. So let's assume the trek was for five days. I mean, I feel like we only see one true day pass, but for something like this, it has to take, I think at least five. Let's also assume he's paying each guide about $50 a day, which kind of correlates with what I'm seeing. So $100 over the course of five days, that's going to be about $500 that we can add to the total, give or take a lot of estimation. I also want to spend this time saying that a lot of this stuff wasn't even filmed in location. Everything, including the Greenland scenes, and except the New York scenes were filmed in Iceland. Meaning this scene with the waterfall in Afghanistan is actually a waterfall in Iceland. Eventually he makes it to the top. He gets some TikTok Beautiful motivational quotes going. thrown his way. He plays a game of soccer and then just cuts to black where he's getting put on a no-fly list. So what happened in between? Since there's literally zero evidence for, <laughs> for what happened, I think I'm just gonna have to give a range here. This range will be from $0 assuming that Sean maybe paid for the return back, maybe as a private jet. I don't think he does, but maybe, who knows? And then the other side will be me adding the most logical amount of money I could think of. So let's dive more into that. The only thing we know for a fact is he went into LAX and then back to New York. We know this because, well, it says it's LAX and also the dating website guy picks him up and Previously, he already mentioned he lives in Los Angeles. And can you believe potentially Walter was spending $500 yearly on that subscription for that dating website? I mean, my boy Walter was just down atrociously. So if Walter did the most logical thing, not money-wise, but geographically being consistent with the movie, we are probably looking at a $1,500 price tag minimum from Afghanistan to Los Angeles. Then from there, about 150 back in New York. Again, 2024 prices. Okay, so when it's all said and done, drum roll please. <laughs> we are looking between $4,883.25, that's the zero price tag range, and then even more realistically, $6,533.25. Jesus. Considering he has $6,858.25, 37 cents to start the journey we aren't looking too hot savings wise however i think we're still technically in the green depending on how you estimate and he did evolve his life for the better in a lot of different ways and i mean i would rather spend six thousand five hundred dollars on this than spend ten thousand dollars on one of those alpha men boot camps look around look at each other look to your left and your right more than 60 percent will not okay so i know i mentioned at the beginning that i was going to include a section about replicating this trip like on your own and like the realistic price tag and assuming food prices and accommodation and all that stuff but i'm already thinking this video is a little too long so 
come back next Sunday. I'll make a follow-up part two video with that section. But while in the meantime, you can check out my other videos like this, where I explore the world's mystery. I am happy and mentally sane. I pinky promise. Like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. <laughs> that's the, that's the outro.